<clears throat> okay, so we we are studying the um, hypothesis testing, and <clears throat> so we have two uh, yeah two different hypotheses where uh, we have to select one of them uh, as the true one. Okay, and uh, yeah, we studied about uh, the two different hypotheses. Okay, so I mean the two different errors. So the first one is when the null hypothesis or kind of default hypothesis is true, and then and then we reject this hypo hypothesis, and uh, yeah, this is the probability of type one error. And then uh, when the the alternative hypothesis is true, so this is false. So it is the same as H1 is true, right? So in this case, <clears throat> yeah, we can think of the probability of wrongly uh, not rejecting or wrongly accepting H not or the null hypothesis, and then that probability is beta. And then yeah, we can think of this uh, the remaining probability of having a correct decision. <clears throat> okay, and then. So as a criteria to select one of these two hypotheses as true, so we basically uh, start with a particular statistic. What was the statistic? It was function of our given random variable. And in particular, our random variable is joint one, which we call as a sample, right? IID observations from the same distribution, right? And then uh, based on this uh, uh, statistic value or the function value of our random variable, so we, yeah, we almost do the same thing as the interval estimate, okay? So we almost do the, uh, really the same thing of an interval estimate, okay? And then for that interval estimate, we use this uh, statistic. And then this, uh, suppose this statistic is x bar. And then uh, we can have a kind of a, uh, interval estimate like uh, yeah, si yeah, something similar to this, right? And now, um, now, now our um, yeah, in the context of a uh, hypothesis testing, <clears throat> we consider this a statistic directly, and then think of it's a range. Okay, if this guy lies between maybe. 8 or yeah 8 to 10 and then we come up with this kind of an interval okay for yeah, directly for our statistic okay mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> when this guy falls into this region or it satisfies this inequality and then we we do not reject the null hypothesis or we accept the hypothesis I mean uh, it's just a one simple example and then if uh, x bar is uh, falling outside of this region, and then that's when we mm, reject the hypo uh, null hypothesis and accept the, the alternative hypothesis. Okay, so in that sense, it is almost the same thing as the um, interval estimate, so that uh, we have some intervals for yeah directly for our uh, uh, yeah our test statistic. <clears throat> and then uh, in this case, you can think of it as a kind of a two-sided yeah two-sided uh, interval <coughs> estimate. Okay, so that is exactly called a kind of two-sided uh, test or hypothesis testing, but also we can think of something like this as our uh, interval estimate, right? But in this case, uh, yeah, when x uh, bar satisfies this inequality, and then uh, that's when we uh, uh, accept or do not reject the null hypothesis, and uh, if it's outside of this region, and then uh, we reject the um, hypothesis. And then we can think of these uh, threshold value, right? So this threshold value is called a critical value, critical value, okay? <clears throat> and then also we can think of this uh, critical region, and uh, especially this one corresponds to the region where we can reject the null hypothesis, okay? So that is a kind of a more interesting region, or that's a more interesting event or situation, because yeah, if we think of some kind of medicine example, we suppose we created a medicine. So we want to claim that, okay, this one is much better than the existing medicine. 
So that is our alternative hypothesis. And the null hypothesis is that just default belief that, uh, okay, uh, my own, I mean, new medicine is no better than the existing one, right? So that is a default hypothesis. And then, <clears throat> in what kind of value of our statistic uh, can we claim that our hypo uh, alternative hypothesis, hypothesis is true? So that is called a critical region. Okay? So that is a kind of interesting region that we kind of want. And then the threshold value is uh, called the uh, uh, critical value. And then also the um, acceptance region is, uh, yeah, the complement, yeah, complement of this uh, critical region. Okay, so those in those regions, uh, we just do not reject the null hypothesis, which means we accept the default belief. <coughs> okay. Any questions so far? Okay, let me continue a little bit more into a little bit more detailed part because uh, I don't want to stop uh, yeah, from, the, from the things that I, that I taught. Okay, so now let's think of a more detailed scenario where we have to, where we have to consider these two hypotheses. So here the situation is we obtain this sample which is composed of an n <coughs> observation. And then uh, it comes from the normal distribution. So each of them will follow yeah, IID normal distribution. And then the variance is known. And also we are interested in this question of mean value. Okay. And then, yeah, so suppose the previous belief or the common belief so far was the mean value of yeah, for example, a mean value of a person living in the in Korea was maybe one seventy-five centimeter. Okay, and then yeah, this is a kind of common belief, and then we apply this uh, common belief to those sample from uh, the um, uh, U.S. region. Okay, so we collect the people's height from the U.S. region. Okay, these are the sample that we obtained from this uh, U.S. region. <coughs> And then we want to answer that, okay, their distribution has the same mean as this, or they have a different mean. So uh, we want to have, yeah, we want to answer this kind of question. So in that case, the two no two hypotheses is, uh, yeah, is this one. For the null one, is uh, the same, which is a uh, mu zero. And then the other hypothesis, alternative hypothesis is, uh, okay, it is uh, not uh, 175, okay, and then. Suppose your sample uh, had a, a sample mean as 178 centimeter. Okay, 178 centimeter. So in this case, okay, so it is uh, certainly different from 175, right? But yeah, in that case, uh, can we just uh, say that, okay, so their mean is uh, quite different. But this value itself can come from some noisy observation, right? So uh, it might happen that, uh, it might be the case that Indeed, uh, the U.S. people's uh, height is actually having the true mean of 175, right? So we cannot like uh, directly answer this kind kind of question uh, easily, right? Okay, so what we are thinking of is <clears throat> so uh, in typical hypothesis testing, I mean it's a, it's a high level overview. But the, uh, we have these two different hypotheses, and also we start with this alpha value, which is the level of uh, significance. Okay, so what was this one? Okay, so this alpha was, assuming that I, our null hypothesis was, uh, hypothesis was true, and the, re, uh, the probability of rejecting this hypothesis. Okay, so <clears throat> we assume that the true distribution is, or uh, this uh, null hypothesis is true. And then, uh, what is our uh, distribution for the sample mean? So the story is almost the same as uh, interval estimate. So 175 would have the, the mean value, and then it will have this uh, distribution, and then uh, this uh, sample mean will have the mean value of mu, and then sigma will be 
square root uh, sigma over square root n squared, right? So this is the distribution of this um, uh, x bar, right? <clears throat> and then we consider like 5% uh, of the um, alpha value or the probability of type 1 error. Okay, so in this case, uh, in the case of two-sided uh, interval estimate, for example, then we put the 2.5% of the probability, right? And so this value will be 196, right? Okay, and then now let's, yeah, uh, as I mentioned, we think, yeah, we think of the intervals directly for this x bar. So we do not manipulate this inequality so that the mu is shown in the middle, but we place this x bar in the middle. And then what is the range? The range will be, <clears throat> yeah, the probability on this part. Okay, so this is a uh, uh, taking up the 95% of the probability, and then what is the region for it? And in that case, it is a 175, which is a mu, plus, yeah, 196, 1.96 times square uh, sigma square, over square root n, right? And then the other one is 175 minus 1.96 times sigma square root n. So this is some kind of an uh, interval estimate for for the yeah for some uh, true mean, right? But it's a uh, slightly different. I mean, it's almost uh, it looks almost the same as the interval estimate, but the um, the main difference was this guy was mu, right? And then what was this guy? This guy was our Sample mean value, x bar, right? So depending on that, I mean, even though the length of this interval is the same, but the, it can shift around, right? But in this case, we put this x bar in the middle, and then this range will be completely determined based on our true parameter that we assume to be true because we assume that h naught or no hypothesis is true, right? So this is assumed to be the true one. And then, yeah, we have this known sigma and the square root n, right? <clears throat> okay, so this is the region of what? Uh, not accepting, I mean not rejecting the null hypothesis. So this is the region of accepting the null hypothesis, right? With the 95% of the probability. Okay, but uh, yeah, Let's see. So suppose based on your known sigma and uh, n value, that range was one, yeah, plus minus three, so it was uh, one seventy eight and uh, 172. So this region was determined based on the true parameter mu that was assumed to be true in the null hypothesis and also alpha value, right? So we start with this alpha value as well. <clears throat> and then what is the probability of like uh, committing or having a type one error? So this distribution is still true, but your sample mean was shown to be like 179. So in that case, even though your region of accepting the null hypothesis was 172, 178, but your sample was out of range, but unfortunately, this actually indeed came from this null hypothesis being true. So this is the probability of an error in, and in total it's uh, 5%, right? And then uh, let's think about yeah quite similar yes uh, related I mean closely related but uh, a little bit more uh, interesting and useful measure called a p value p value p value okay. so p value is yeah something like this <clears throat> so 
it happened that your uh, sample mean or sample st test statistic was shown to be 179. Okay, and then what will be what will be the lowest alpha value that will reject? I mean, that make us reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so alpha value was fixed as a 0 0.05 or 5 percent, and from by using that these two uh, critical value were determined, right? But what if we do not know the um, alpha value, but we start with the, this uh, particular sample mean value, and then let's put 179 here, and then what will be the corresponding alpha value or the, the probability of a type one error? It will be something like this, 179 and Plus five, uh, plus four, and uh, one seventy one, and these probability. So these probability will be what? Yeah, uh, smaller than five percent. And that, uh, yeah, suppose these two probability, the sum of these two were maybe three point eight probability. Okay, so this is called a p value. A p value. <coughs> In this case, we still think of the situation where the null hypothesis is true, and then you yeah suppose you obtained this sample, and then you consider the probability of observing this particular value, or even more extreme value, even more extreme value. So that is the definition of the, this p-value. So uh, yeah, let me uh, uh, ask uh, in the other way. So. What is the probability of observing exactly 179? 179. It will be zero, simply. The probability will be zero, right? And then what will be more extreme, more or even rarer kind of cases? It will be like uh, towards uh, this, right? So we consider all these cases, uh, all these cases that are equally or even more extreme values than the currently observed one and then summing the probabilities of these cases and then that is called a p-value okay and overall this probability um, you can understand this probability as uh, yeah as an indicator that your null hypothesis is being false or is uh, it's actually not true so so this was the assumption that your null hypothesis is true. And suppose p-value was 0 0.0001, which is like uh, yeah, 0.01%, which is really, really small probability. Right? And then that really corresponds to the case that uh, you observed really like uh, 184 or something like that, which is uh, even more yeah, quite extreme value. right? And then uh, considering this value or even more extreme values altogether, and then the probability will only be 0.01. Right? So in that case, your null hypothesis hypothesis is probably false, right? So <clears throat> this kind of p-value, I mean, uh, yeah. So you guys are just a freshman, so yeah, some of them may uh, may do some research like uh, on uh, deep learning or statistics or in uh, any other kind of fields. And then uh, suppose you created or you invented a new method. And then your new, you want to show that or claim that uh, your new method was actually better than the existing method. And then you can actually utilize this the p-value. And uh, yeah, people often use this p-value a lot. And uh, yeah, so in this case, the null hypothesis is, is uh, still the same. So your your method uh, will be no better, no better than the existing method. So you follow or assume that the null hypothesis is true, and then you compute the p-value of observing. So it's like this. So when yeah, when running the um, existing method, and then the accuracy value was like uh, eighty percent, seventy-eight percent, eighty-two percent, and uh, seventy-nine percent, and so on. So these are from running the existing method multiple times using maybe the, some different initialization or uh, some different, yeah, slightly different setting. So these are, yeah, kind of sample that we obtained by using the existing method or existing medicine. 
and then your method uh, were actually generating the the accuracy values of 85 percent, 88 percent, maybe 79 percent, unfortunately, and then maybe uh, 80, 87 percent or so. Okay, and then yeah, these are yeah, these seem to be bigger than these values. And then can you say yeah, uh, can you claim that? Uh, your uh, method is actually better, I mean statistically, significantly better than the other case, okay? <clears throat> okay, and then from this model, you can obtain the kind of estimate of the true parameter, mu and uh, mu and sigma, okay? So in practice, we do not know the variance or either uh, this uh, uh, mean, true mean value, right? But we kind of utilize, yeah, we kind of, we kind of use just uh, approximate values, right? But then, in practice, in practice, this one roughly had the mean value of 80%. And then plus minus, what was the standard deviation? It looks like, yeah, maybe 2% or so, right? And then, suppose your mean value, so this is like the height from, collected from the uh, United States, okay? So in this case, uh, suppose your mean value was 81 and then what is the probability of ob observing this value when this hypothesis is, is true okay so in that case we can think of the p-value and p-value will be yeah <coughs> yeah it's a uh, it's uh, something like these values which is quite large right so in this case you cannot easily claim that your method uh, actually has a uh, significantly like a higher accuracy than the existing one, okay? And then, yeah, suppose you obtain the sample mean from your method as maybe 90%, and then in that case, it's like a five times the sigma, right? So in that case, the, the p-value will be really, really small. So in that case, the p-value will be even smaller than 0 0.0001 or something like that, okay? So, yeah. When you happen to like read uh, some paper, and then uh, yeah, people often uh, does the following thing. So okay, our method was shown to be significantly better than the um, existing method, and then in the parenthesis, p equals 0.001, for example. So that p value is coming from this kind of a uh, uh, yeah method of uh, yeah computing this uh, p value. Okay. <coughs> Okay, and then, uh, yeah, intuitively, yeah, it also depends on this uh, standard deviation, right? So from, yeah, when using the um, existing method, even though the um, average percentage or average accuracy was 80%, but it was really uh, having a high variance or standard deviation, like sometimes 60% or sometimes 95% and maybe 85% and so on. In that case, this guy will be much bigger. So in that case, our null hypothesis will have really wide wide distribution right so until yeah until you really go uh, far from the the mean value of the the null hypothesis uh, yeah it will be really uh, difficult to achieve really small <coughs> yeah, small p value okay Okay, so back to back to what we are studying. So we considered, yeah, we studied the p-value and also the um, predefined alpha value, right? So when computing the p-value, yeah, we didn't we didn't need it, uh, we didn't need the, the alpha value yet, right? But then suppose we utilize those two, and then alpha was like five percent, and then the p-value was uh, three point eight percent, and then in this situation. Would you reject or not reject the null hypothesis? So do you reject null hypothesis or accept null hypothesis? So in the case of an alpha value, it had uh, this kind of a 178 as a critical value. And then the fact that you obtain smaller p-value, and that means your value was even more extreme than predefined or predetermined 5% right? So in that case, yeah, you observe even more extreme kind of value. So that's when we reject the null hypothesis, right? 
So <coughs> if p is less than alpha, then that's when we reject the hypothesis. Then yeah, in the other cases, we accept. <coughs> Okay, and uh, also one thing, uh, at a, yeah, one thing uh, uh, that you should have in mind at a high level. So this, yeah, this region. So this region is the acceptance region, right? Acceptance region of accepting the null hypothesis being true, right? So in that case, uh, this is, uh, yeah, so. This region is uh, completely determined based on the null hypothesis. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it sounds a little obvious, but uh, you will see why it is a non-trivial, but uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, that region is uh, completely determined based on your uh, null hypothesis and also its uh, corresponding distribution and also the um, predetermined alpha value, okay? So that means, that means you don't even know, I, I mean, uh, you don't even need what the yeah what the um, uh, alternative hypothesis okay what are the um, alternative hypotheses you didn't even use any information about the um, alternative hypothesis right so alternative hypothesis yeah so yeah yeah let's yeah let's go ahead and uh, proceed and uh, you will see uh, why I'm mentioning about yeah mentioning this uh, hopefully in the later slides okay so. Yeah, back to the slide, we consider these two hypotheses. And then <clears throat> our sample mean, or x bar, divided by uh, minus mu. Yeah, so in this case, uh, maybe I uh, skipped some part. But in this case, our hypothesis, the null hypothesis was mu is zero which is mu zero okay and then the other hypothesis is mu is not mu zero okay and then uh, x bar minus zero divided by square root yeah sigma over square root n so this one will follow the gaussian standard normal right and then <clears throat> we have to find uh, this kind of extreme, uh, the critical value, critical value. So alpha is fixed as a uh, five percent. So, if we think of this uh, critical region where we reject the null hypothesis, and then this uh, z value. So this is z. So z should be kind of extreme value, right? So we con we consider this kind of threshold, and then uh, we are yeah assigning more extreme regions as a critical region. <clears throat> okay, so in this case, we put the yeah, 2.5% pro uh, probability, and then uh, we can compute yeah, this value. Yeah, so this C, yeah, it's like this. So X bar is C or X bar is minus c so that way we can consider this critical region which contains those extreme values when the two uh, null hypothesis is true okay so this uh, threshold value is computed yep in this manner so so this value should be c and then this times c should be x bar. So that is our critical value. So this one is this guy, right? So this guy should be, for example, 196, which is corresponding to 2.5 probability. OK, and then uh, c will be yeah computed in this form. <coughs> So in this case, so in these two hypotheses, and then D 
these regions will be the um, acceptance region and then this re these two regions will be critical region uh, that will make us reject the null hypothesis right <clears throat> so I think uh, yeah it's quite easy so let's uh, skip this uh, example and then I think I explained this already and so let me also skip this as well and also this example as well <laughs> yeah so in this example, yeah, you consider like this is a p-value. Okay, and then now let's uh, yeah let's look into a little bit more interesting situation. The probability of committing the type two error, or what if the null uh, the um, alternative hypothesis hypothesis is true? Okay, so we can no longer assume that uh, mu is is zero in this case okay so what if the alternative hypothesis is true in that case what was the alternative hypothesis it was something like this right and then what is the true parameter of the mean value so in this case the um, second situation contains the information or the, uh, the requirement that the true mean is simply not zero but we didn't assume any particular value so we cannot easily standardize this guy which means so suppose the true mean value was particularly like three so in this case we can think of this kind of thing right of standardizing the sample mean into the standard normal uh, distribution but <clears throat> in this situation we didn't assume a particular mu value so the situation <laughs> is just that mu is not zero right but we still need a par particular mu value right and then so that's uh, that makes the situation a little bit more tricky when the no uh, when the alternative hypothesis is true so <clears throat> We studied the beta. So beta was what? Beta was the probability of committing the type 2 error, which means the no, uh, alternative hypothesis was true, but we wrongly accepted the null hypothesis. So that is the second type of an error, right? So the probability of such an error is called a beta. And this beta cannot be easily computed. It's actually dependent on a particular uh, true parameter mu. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and then let's think of some uh, previous example where. <clears throat> The null hypothesis was 172 as a kind of a true mean. I mean, uh, when the the null hypothesis was true, and then by using the um, alpha value, we uh, computed already the critical region and the acceptance region, right? So what was that? So it was like 175 and 178, 172. So uh, x bar should be in this range, right? And does this region uh, change uh, when the alternative hypothesis is true? So the point is, so this one is a completely determined based on our null hypothesis and uh, its information and also alpha value, right? So this region is not changing when the true mu was maybe three or five or maybe 185 or something like that. So again, this region is fixed, 
right? So this region is fixed. But what is our situation that we consider as true? So we consider the situation where uh, the our sample is following the distribution of the Gaussian distribution of a particular mean value, mu, which we do not know, and some sigma square. Right? So let's change this value because uh, we didn't yeah, specify fully about this value in the alternative hypothesis. Okay? Then again, the um, acceptance region is this guy. Okay? If our sample statistic or uh, sample mean just falls into this region, and then that's when we accept the null hypothesis. But we consider when uh, the situation when this guy is actually a wrong decision. Right? And this situation is something like this. So suppose your mean value was maybe 185. So in this case, uh, your uh, sample mean will actually follow will actually follow 185, which is a mu value, and then yeah, it's uh, this, right? So in this case, your distribution is something like this, right? And then what is the probability of type 2 error? What is the probability of type 2 error? This is the true distribution. And again, your acceptance region will not change. It will not depend on your alternative hypothesis, right? And so this region is fixed. So what we have to compute is this area or the probability corresponding to this region right yep it's good right <coughs> and uh, let's look at this uh, yeah, this expression mathematical expression again so this is corresponding to x bar 178 172 okay so this range or region is fixed right but then we have to compute the probability of that fixed region when your distribution actually has the true mean value as mu. So it can be 185 or 188 or 177 and so on. Okay. And then suppose <coughs> your no, uh, your alternative hypothesis was true, and then uh, it's a mean, uh, the the true mean value was 185. In this case, this probability looks like a yeah looks really small, but 